Time for this week in Penn State football here on Penn Live. And you know a lot about young breakout players, but on this segment, we're going to talk about Penn State veteran breakout players. Greg Pickle, I actually wrote a little piece on Penn Live over the weekend. I don't know if you saw it. I did. I had four or five guys on there uh, who I think are kind of established already, but I think they still have room to grow and they can really help Penn State if they do so. One guy I mentioned might be in a little bit of hot water. The corner, Tariq Castro Fields, cited for an off-the-field issue, uh, I think related to a fraternity right. fracas. I don't know if that's the right word, Allegedly. but I really like him, third-year yeah. junior. Uh, what did you see from him last year, and what do you think uh, – what do you think he's capable of this year? Yeah, the word with him, I think, I don't know if underrated is fair because I think the, the, a lot of people that follow his team closely knew just how good he was. But he was he's just rock solid as far as I'm concerned. And he has a little bit of size, a little bit of speed. He has a little bit of everything that you need, I think, to play that position at a high level. And, you know, he was a guy that Penn State really desperately wanted on the recruiting trail. They were able to get him and lock him up and mm -hmm. make sure he committed to Penn State. And now... He's entering a time when he is going to be relied upon. They've sent a couple guys to the NFL the last couple of years, and he could easily be the latest one. But, uh, yeah, he might have some off-field issues to get over first. Yeah, and he fits in with a group that also include, includes excuse me, John Reed, um, Donovan Johnson, and I still think there's a chance that the true freshman Keaton Ellis could be heard from this year as well. He would be a younger breakout, Correct. Not, a, not a veteran breakout. Let's switch sides to the offensive side. Michael Mennett, uh, first year as a starter last year, had been a reserve guard. Uh, but they, they instead they tweaked their lineup. They moved Connor McGovern from center to guard and put Mennett in at center. I thought as the year went on, uh, he played he's, he played very well. I think he has a, another level to his game this year. A redshirt junior, very athletic player. And when you go back to 2016 and James Franklin's recruiting class, it was really Michael Mennett and McGovern and Miles Sanders who were kind of the the, the, the gets in that class. Those right. two moved on to the NFL. Miles is with the Eagles. Connor McGovern is with my Cowboys. Um, but what do you think of, about Michael Mennett this year? And is he potentially maybe an all Big Ten player, whether it's first team, second team? I don't even know if they do third teams, but is, can he be that good? I think they do do a third team. All right, great. Good, yeah. Um, I, I look at it like this if Penn State's going to be the best offense it can be, he better be an all Big Ten pick because I, if they don't have that kind of play and leadership from the center position, I think that, you know, you're talking about a lot of new faces across the board this year, especially on offense. And you need him and Will Fries and Steven Gonzalez to really be the ones that steady the ship when things need to be steadied out. And so I think that all the talent in the world is there. Matt Langer said a couple weeks ago that it's now time for him to master his craft and really drill down on the finer points mm -hmm. of being a center. So... I think certainly he has all the opportunity to, but I think he needs to for this Penn State offensive fire and also. Okay, let's go back to defense. Uh, when you talk about Penn State's linebackers, Greg, Cam Brown and Micah Parsons get most of the headlines. I think a lot of people think that Micah might be a first-team all-Big Ten pick and that Cam Brown could be uh, – if he, he's one of the top athletes on the team as well and also a, a guy who might be able to play at the next level. But do we talk enough about the guy in the middle, Jan Johnson, a former walk-on, Governor Mifflin in Pennsylvania, expected to be the starter for the second year in a row in the middle. Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is how will he help, especially Micah, you know, grow into that leadership role. I think Jan's one of the probably uh, top leaders on the team. Yeah. He's been through a bunch. He has a ton of different experiences. He can help in ways that, uh, you know, go beyond the football field. So uh, the biggest question for me is how many snaps does he get? We've seen Brent Pry, and I think James Franklin's even admitted to this, that they're more 4-2-5 than they are 4-3. Yeah. And the, the snap counts bear it out. The tape mm -hmm. bears it out. Yeah, they're in 4-3 a fair amount. But when it comes down to it, they're a 4-2-5 defense. And so I think yeah. the question with Jan becomes, what, when, is he, when he is on the field, does he make the biggest impact that he can? He was pretty good last year. Another offseason in the weight room and everything like that. He should, should have a chance to be even better. This yeah. Fall. I think given who is on Penn State's schedule this year, I know they play a lot of 4-2-5. They play Pitt. Mm -hmm. They play, uh, they play uh, Michigan, they play Iowa. Those are teams that like to kind of yes. uh, li line up and try and run the ball down your throat. I think that Jan Johnson can play a very significant role in those three games. Brent Pry, I think this offseason, has talked about, you know, the, the defense, this year's defense is getting a lot of uh, uh, 
you know, buzz. Right. But if their run defense does not improve, they're not going to they're not going to get to where they want to be. Right. And if their run defense is going to get better, I think Jan Johnson's going to have to play a big role. Absolutely. I'm right there with you, Bob. <laughs> one more guy I want to get to. Uh, he's kind of one of the more unique players on Penn State's defense. Um, Shaka Tony last year. Uh, I believe he's going to be a redshirt junior this year. He was a redshirt sophomore last year. Mm -hmm. He had four sacks in one game. We saw it at Indiana. It was actually in one quarter, and that tied a Penn State single-game record for sacks. Yeah. And that's great. We saw him two years ago at Northwestern kind of really do some damage to the Wildcats. I think he had a couple tackles for loss mm -hmm. and a forced fumble. He, he had four sacks all of last season. Right. So he had all his sacks in one game. You see... He's got some tantalizing talent, but you don't always see it from game to game to game. Um, do you think he is ready uh, to, to kind of pick his game up a little bit and maybe be a designated pass rusher? I'm not sure he's, he's, he's particularly strong against the run, but is this a guy that Penn State needs to get more from? I think he's the guy that if there's anyone in that defensive end group who's not going to get enough buzz going into the season yeah. that maybe will surprise us after the first three weeks, four weeks, It'll be him. I mean, he has all the talent in the world to be a speed rusher, a pass rusher. We've seen that. The question always is going to become, does he keep his weight on to be right. a factor against the run, or is he just a two-down guy? And if so, or maybe a one-down guy. If so, that's okay. I mean, I think they have enough bodies there yeah. that if you – you can afford to have somebody be a specialist as long as you're consistently really good at it. That's been the thing, like you just said, that's held him back throughout his career. I think he's a great person in this conversation, and by the bi first bye week, we should have a better feel for what kind of 2019 season he's going to have. Yeah, Penn State lists him between 235 and 240, and that does seem light for today's game. But I think some of the more veteran Penn State fans will remember that 10 years ago, uh, Penn State had a kid that played at 225, Aaron Maven, mm -hmm. uh, defensive end. Uh, and came, he came, he had almost uh, 20 tackles for loss, I believe, uh, as a redshirt sophomore. Entered the draft. People were wondering what was he thinking, but he put on about 10 or 15 pounds leading up to the draft and ended up being a first-round pick of the Buffalo Bills. Now, I'm not saying that, that Shaka Tony is maybe in Aaron Maven's class, but if he can play at 225, I think he could probably play at 240. Consistency is going to be the biggest thing, I think, for Shaka Tony. He, he's played... Uh, a lot of football the last two years, but we've only really talked about two of his games. Right. All right, that's it for this week in Penn State football. Who knows what we're going to be talking about next week.